Walk with me through Mecca, the most sacred place for Muslims worldwide. As I move, you can tilt your smartphone or move your cursor to see everything around me, a 360 degree view. We are now walking toward the Masjid al-Haram, the largest mosque in the world. Throughout this tour, we will visit the landmarks that millions of pilgrims come to during Hajj. Before we enter, if we scroll to my right, you will see people drinking from Zamzam water, which Muslims consider holy. Let's go inside. During Hajj, it's absolutely packed. As you see, the floor and the columns are all marbled. The shelves have copies of the Quran. I am now facing the Kaaba, the symbolic home of God on earth. This is where the pilgrimage begins with the Tawaf, where worshippers circle around the structure seven times. This golden monument to my left houses a rock that is said to have Prophet Abraham's footprint. During Hajj, more than two million people will circle around the Kaaba, all in the same anti-clockwise direction, to signify harmony in the worship of God. People come here from all over the world. It is the duty of Muslims to make the journey to Mecca, if they can, at least once in their lifetime. Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam enshrined in the Qur'an. Tawaf can also be done from the upper floors, which we will be visiting shortly. area of El Kaaba is the black stone. Pilgrims try to kiss it or touch it. Those who can't reach it acknowledge it as they pass by by raising their hand. Next I will take you to the Masa. This is where pilgrims go on a ritual walk between two hills, Safa and Marwa. They are around 300 meters apart and the ritual is to walk from one to the other seven times. It is believed that Abraham's wife Hajar did the same as she looked for water for her infant son Ismail. It was on her seventh lap that she found a water spring, Zamzam water, the one I told you about as we were entering into the mosque. Let's go upstairs. There are two upper levels to this mosque where you can either pray or go around the Kaaba. The mosque is going through a fourth major expansion project. The construction is estimated to continue until 2020. By then, the mosque will accommodate over 3 million pilgrims for the annual Hajj. You can see the construction cranes on the horizon. A lot of people have denounced all the development around the mosque. The hotels, the malls and that big clock that is 35 times taller than London's Big Ben. 
Since 1985, about 95% of Mecca's historic buildings, many dating back to the time of Prophet Muhammad around 600 AD, have been demolished to make way for new construction. This used to be a small town in a valley. It is now almost twice the size of New York City. Almost two million people live here. Next, we head to Mina, a suburb of Mecca that is central to the Hajj. We have to drive there because it's seven kilometers away. During Hajj, this road is so packed it can take up to four hours to get there. So many people walk. This is where pilgrims stay for three or four days. They come here to reject Satan. They throw pebbles at this pillar, which is supposed to symbolize the devil. There are two other pillars to stone here. It's never been as empty as this. The stones that you throw have to come from here, Muzdalifa, a vast empty area that turns into an outdoor camp for millions during Hajj. Muzdalifa is located between Mina and another valley named Arafat. We are heading to Arafat now. The central point of Arafat is this hill, the Mount of Mercy, about 70 meters high. Prophet Muhammad is said to have given his last key sermon here. Coming here is crucial for pilgrims. If you do not show up at Arafat on the day you're supposed to, your whole pilgrimage is invalid. Imagine that over two million people on tens of thousands of buses or on foot trying to make it here in one day. Some even visit the hill outside the Hajj season. Worshippers believe that prayers here are answered and sins are cleansed. After this tiresome spiritual journey, Muslims return home with the hope that their pilgrimage has been accepted and sins forgiven.